Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm David Bimmel, and this is Christopher Draves, and our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Yes, normally I have a logo here, but today it didn't want to answer with me. So, Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can get all your hockey needs, um, skate sharpened puck blades, skates. Um, I believe they even have replacement blades, so get there. Um, they uh, go, go there and uh, buy CCM gear. Uh, spend a hundred bucks and get two free Admirals tickets. And uh, also visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com or call them at 414-800-7585. All right, enough with the uh, sponsorship plugging. Yeah, st before we do game stats, just look into the team first. You know, just get it all out before we dive into the team. Uh, oh. First off, Happy New Year. Now we're... What? Wait. This is his first uh, venting session of the new season, or the new year. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, there we go. What? Before we do that. You have to vent. Wait. I gotta be overly dramatic. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody! Alright, now, <laughs> rip into him. Alright. First off, this team lacks passion, effort, work ethics, and ability. Mmm, that fourth part was sarcastic. They have all the ability in the world. If you look at what they can do, which they showed us in the first period. And part of the second. And Pekka showed you what he can do when they play defense in front of him. After that, they stop playing defense in front of him. And... Any goalie in the league, including Ben Bishop, would have been like, the hell? Hey, help! I can't do this by myself. You know, goalies, yes, we are. they are the last... Line of defense. The last line of defense, literally. However, they can't do it by themselves. There's no goalie that's big enough to cover the entire net. If that was the case, everyone would be trying to find one. And there'd be a lot of zero, zero, quadruple shootout or five day long shootouts and stuff like that. Yeah. So at this point, what I'm saying is, is it's got to come down to fire the GM, fire the coach, fire the assistant coaches, or Start trade somebody. Or firing people. Why to fire or people trade somebody. somebody. Now with Ellis gone, you're going to need a defenseman, which you're going to have to try to get. I don't know. We got some good defenders down here, or up here, or wherever. Geographically up here, systematically down here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So, my opinion is this: Fire Laviolette, bring up Carl Taylor. That's my solution. If they don't turn it around from that, fire the GM and start scratch. Basically, he's saying begin to rebuild. No, don't begin to rebuild. Don't get rid of pieces. Because there's a... Getting rid of coaches, and that's usually phase one of a rebuild. No, because certain coaches just don't fit a system. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but the Preds have a system. They have what they the pieces to win. They just don't have the coaching behind them to win. Or maybe the players are just not... Fitting into the system that the coach is preaching. Well, if they're pl if this is the system the coach is preaching, oh my God, help us all. <laughs> well, I'm just, well, why do you think maybe the players ain't responding to it? That's what I'm saying is, is here's the thing. McCarthy has never played a day in his life as hockey. His, he is one of the, the defensive... Uh, yes, he is an assistant coach for the uh, Predators. He is the defensive coach. He does not coach power play. And guess what? This year, the Predators, when, when being in the defensive zone, have given up more goals this year to this point than any year past in the last decade. That's n I scratched the one year that Pekka was injured for a whole season because that's something you cannot predict. But at this point, here's the thing. I'm not mad if they miss the playoffs at this point. I'm mad if they sit there on the bubble 
Because here's the thing. you got guys who are at the end of their contract with some value. you got Granlin, who has value. You have Smith, who has value. Now, Smith, you're going to want to re-sign because he's part of the locker room and, well, has been for the latter part of a decade. But also, you need new blood. I think that's important. You have not done that. Outside, outside of Duchesne, the Preds have not brought in any new blood over the last 10 years. Outside of P.K. Subban. And even his second year of the team. He was know. horrible. And, he, uh, you know, and, and this is where I'm at with it. Maybe you do trade Granlin away for a defenseman. And, and, and you know, scoring's not everything. The team has no problem putting the puck in the net. It's keeping it out that's the problem. You can score 20 goals. But if the other team scores 21, you lose. Dante Fabro showed glimpses of what he can do. So there's a future for him. There's five players on the team with no trade clauses, Pecorine included. So for all of you who are sitting here saying trade Pecorine, he'd have to wait if his no trade clause. And likelihood of him doing that is that. Absolutely none. Even if the team slumps and misses the playoffs, he's part of a dying breed who's loyal to the team to a fault. And will buy into the system. Now, I don't know. I, I read Adam Vigneault's uh, post post report from about a month ago that said Laviolette's not feeling any pressure. If he's not feeling pressure after this game, us fans and media guys should just if he's still part of this team after the All Star break and we're still losing and we're not turning it around at any point. Hey, at this point, get it ready for a bumpy ride because it's going to be a long season. I mean, the one thing he did that I liked during the game is he took a timeout. Bad part is, is he took a timeout after they tied it up. You don't do that. You take the timeout when they score the goal and you looks like your guys are gassed. You take that time and you make that move. But you take the timeout after they tie it up. Now they have a bunch of energy and your guys just get a little bit back because now they're amped up. You also give them time to figure out what your attack's going to be, which you don't change it. It's just one of those things. It's coming down to coaching. The GM can put the best team on the ice, but you, if the coach isn't coaching, then you're not going to win. He's getting out-coached. Every game. People know what he's going to do every game. But on to the game and the stats. Well, in case you guys haven't figured out, Predators lost their very first winter classic appearance, 14 to Dallas Stars. Alrighty then, shots on goal, 35-33 Dallas. Uh, Face-off percentage, 55% Dallas, uh, Predators had 45%. The Predators were 2 for 4 on the power play, Dallas was 2 for 3. Um, penalty minutes were 8 for the Preds, 21 for the Stars, you could probably talk about that one later. Uh, hits were... Uh, I'm just going to say Corey Perry is a POS. Yeah, uh, the Stars had uh, 42 hits, Predators had 26 uh, Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of hits. They uh, they put the beating on the Predators, literally. Didn't they wore them down and then took it out on the scoreboard? It's Pretty much. What, what uh, block shots were uh, 18 for the Stars, Predators had 12, and giveaways, uh, Dallas had 17, and the Predators had 12. All right, so I'm going to get into the scoring a bit here, but first I'm going to wish Ryan Ellis a speedy recovery because, well, that's what I do. 
Yeah, he might have a concussion or a broken jaw. We'll find out as soon as we can. Um, Matt Duchesne scored his ninth goal of the season with an assist from Forsberg, his 14th, and Yossi his 26th. Yossi doing what Yossi does best. Uh, Dante Fabro got his fourth with an assist from Duchesne, his 19th, and Yossi his 27th. So those guys, Duchesne and Yossi, they proved that they could do things. Fabro proved he could hold up some stuff. Uh, did a really good job playing de uh, defending um, uh, Jamie Benn. So, uh, scoring in the second was Blake Como, his fifth, with an assist from Dickinson, his seventh, and Lindell, his eleventh. Now, in the third, 58 seconds in, Matthias Yanmark with his fifth, with an assist from Klingberg, his fifteenth, and Rope Hintz, his sixth. That was on the power play. Then, Alexander Radloff. Scored his 12th with an assist from Klingberg, his 16th, and Ben, his 11th. That was on the power play. And then Andre Sikera scored his first of the year with an assist from Fasca, his 7th, and Yanmark, his 9th. In net for the Priors was Pecorine stopping 31 of 35 with a .886 save percentage. On the power play, he stopped 4 of 6. Even strength, he stopped 26 of 28. Shorthanded 101. Ben Bishop uh, stopped 26 to 26 even strength. That is a problem. If you cannot score even strength on the team and only score on the power play, you're going to lose. Uh, he stopped uh, four of six, just like Pekka, on the uh, power play and one on one on the shorthanded side. He stopped 31 of 33 uh, for a .939 save percentage. Um, Could Tenorti or Trenton have helped today? I'm only I, asking because they were healthy scratches, no injuries. Over the last hurt. two games, I'm starting to think the Preds may need to run seven defensemen and run one of the speedier defensemen the Admirals have down here yeah. on their on their line, and then just let the guys figure the forwards figure out who's going to fill it out once someone in the defense gets hurt. Because that seems to be our luck this year, and I'm not making excuses for the team. Because here's the thing. As far as only guy I'm going to make excuses for is Pecorino. You cannot have one of the greatest goalies in your franchise's existence sit there and become stop everything for you in the first two periods outside of one, which was lucky because it was a tip by a skate in midair. Um, and then in the third period, you just go, okay, I'm tired. Good night and not play for him you have to learn to play as a family or you're just gonna lose that's part of what it comes down to it's a team game and they're not playing like a team they're always leaving a teammate hanging right pretty much I see defensemen jumping up in the play and I see forwards back there because uh, that's weird. Like during the first period, we saw some pretty good defensive work. Agreed. But second like, period, as the game went on, it kind of tapered off a bit. Yeah, and they then lost. It became non-existent in the third. Clearly, because they gave up third, three goals in the third. They gave up three goals in six minutes and thirty-five seconds of play. Yeah, and then it was just pretty much a lifeless effort the rest of the game. It was getting hard to watch. The longer the game went on, the harder it got to watch because it was just like no energy. They were playing with nothing. All right. My final rant, but I rant about this every time we're on NBC. I hate Mike Milbury. How do you defend Corey Perry's hit? How do you defend someone giving an elbow to the head? Hey, hey we're critiquing a team, not a but it. But it is part of the game. It is, but it's not important. It's irritating. <laughs> it, it doesn't, it does the commentary does not affect the game whatsoever, so I could care less. I guess I could just say that. I could I, care less who's commentating the game as long as the damn team plays better. Commentary is not going to make the team better. <laughs> so you should just give up on your hatred of NBC. Who cares? Yeah, watch the damn game. Who cares who's calling the game? Yeah. You're like, literally, you're the only, one of the only people I know that really care who's commentating the game. 
I don't. I care about the game. I don't give a crap who's calling the game. Just let me watch the damn game. If you don't like the commentary, hit mute. And then I get yelled at. <laughs> By who? You. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I don't let commentary bother me. You just got to ignore the commentary. Ignore words. It's just so hard to ignore words anymore. No, but what Words I'm, don't literally stick to people, man. Just here's, here's, here's my issue. Let them go. I'm not going to let words go from an unbiased network that's being biased. Who cares? Just let it be, dude. You're not the damn police of biasness. Last time I checked, you're completely biased with Pekka. He could never do anything wrong. Just I've let it go. I've gripped him several times this year. So, as far as that goes, I'm not biased towards anyone. Whatever. Have I picked on Carrier at all this year? Yeah, he's been playing great. Anyways, we done talking about the Preds? Nope. Uh, referees were Kyle Rahman and Steve Kazarni, Lines Nimler, Scott Dreskel, and Derek Nansen. Head coach for now is Peter Laviolette, and head coach for Dallas for now, because they've seemed to fire their coach every three weeks or so, hmm. is Rick Bowes, or Bowness. Yeah, and you like your second coach this season? Uh, second in the last two. Oh. Uh... I thought they fired a coach uh, mid-season this year, or just the other No, month. they fired a coach mid-season last year, hired a new one this year, and then fired him mid-season. Mm. So they're on coach three in two years. Mm. All right, so scratches for Nashville were Yannick Weber, Jared Chinardi, and Yakov Trenin. That's why I brought up... Uh, uh, scratches for Dallas were Justin Dowling and Tyler Fidu. See, now you know why I brought up Chinardi and Trenin, because I saw him listed as healthy scratches. Up next, the Admirals play the Cleveland Monsters on Friday. Um, that's our next show. In Cleveland at 7 p.m. Central Time. Yep. And I do believe that's Central Time. Uh, is Cleveland technically uh, Central? No, they're East. They're, they're East Coast? Yeah. Uh, it is... That's not what I wanted. Uh, it is a 6 o'clock puck drop central time. Okay. Um, the Admirals in their last meeting won 4 to nothing. Do you have any stats for that game? Uh, well, that would be December 20th of that game was. Uh, who scored? Huh? Score? Scoring? Yeah. Chill, man. Chill. Uh, let's see here. We had Mika Salamaki. He had a goal. Ren Pitlick had a goal. Tommy Novak had a goal. And Anthony Richard had a goal. Um, also in that game... Uh, Alex Carrier had three assists that game. Our goalie, Connor Ingram, had an assist. So, yeah. And Ms. T.S. Kevlekins was the starter. Kevlekins was the starter. Um, overall, the Admirals in the last five seasons are 16, 10, and 3. Yeah, they used to be in our division until they moved. Yep. Right, when, uh, when did they move? Two years ago they moved? Yep. Um, over the last five, the Admirals are 4 and 1. Over the last five for Cleveland, they are 3 and 2. Yeah, they play Cleveland. Or, uh, 2 Friday. and 3. Yeah, they play Cleveland on Friday and Saturday. Saturday's a 1 p.m. Central Time puck drop. So this is the only preview for Cleveland 12, we're going to give you. 12 o'clock Central. Oh. Yeah, you know what I mean. 1 o'clock Eastern. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, their scoring people. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we have Nathan, what is that, Gerby? Nathan Gerby, uh, 30 games played, 8 goals, 17 assists. Uh, what is it? Adam Clendenning, he has 29 games played, 5 goals, 16 assists. Uh, we have Stefan Math... Ma Stefan Mateau. Yeah, Stefan Mateau. Stefan uh, Mateau. Just whatever. Call 30 him games whatever played, <laughs> 7 goals, 9 assists. Uh, Kevin Stenlund, uh, 27 games played, 6 goals, 10 assists. And then uh, Ryan McInnes, uh, 28 games played, 3 goals, 12 assists. Nathan Gerby has been called up. 
All right, well, Justin Scott, he's their uh, sixth leading scorer, uh, 33 games played, six goals, eight assists. Oh. Uh, break down their goalies. I'll see if there's anybody that we should really be worried about. I mean, it is the Admiral, so I have faith in him, but you never know. Oh. All right. So the only goalie on their roster right now is uh, Vinny Valvelinen. Good God, don't make me do it again. <laughs> Elijah will be starting on Friday and on Saturday. Um, he's played 16 games with a 2.1 goals against average with two shutouts. Um, he has a .923 save percentage and a 57 or .571 shootout percentage. Yeah, Adam Clendenning has uh, five assists in his last five games. Uh, according to this, Clendenning has been going up and down like a madman lately. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Um, outside of that, yes, uh, Nathan Gerby was recalled, and so was Matthias Kivlekin. Say that name five times fast. Um. So. Um, hey, uh, what's the Cleveland's record over their last ten right now? I will look at that in a second. Right now, I'm trying to figure out something else. Uh, you're figuring out stuff. That ain't good. All right, so up top, Elvis. Elvis. Kevin Mar Stenland. He has uh, two goals and three assists in his last five. Elvis Merzlakens has uh, been recalled and is now injured. <laughs> That's a nice way to get called up, get hurt right away. Um, so that happened. So they have no third goalie right now. Um, we yeah, the emergency is back up. We will wait to see who they call up, probably from their ECHL team, which they share with the Buffalo Sabres, which is the Cincinnati Cyclones, which is our former ECHL team back in the day. Yeah, just last year? No, that was Atlanta. Um, oh. We've had Atlanta since losing pretty much Norfolk, which they made that decision. And then it was, before that was Cincinnati. All right, do you have a head up, heads up on what their record is in the last 10? Or should I, like, find it? I'm working on it right now. All right. Yeah, I'm not... In their last 10 games, they are 4-5. Four 4-5-1. and five. Four, five, and one. Okay. 4-5-0-1. Four, oh, do so. they have any type of streak going on? One game win streak. Oh. They lost one against Toronto. Oh, Four to impressive, one. impressive, because the Marlies are typically a tough team. Um, let's see where they sit in their standings. Uh, Cleveland currently sits at a 15-15-1 and 2 record. That is good enough for 7th place in their division. Um, the Admirals are 24-5-3 and 2. That's good enough for first in the league. I don't know what's up. Uh, so actually, had they been in our division, Cleveland, they would currently be in. Let's see, what do they have? I take it probably last. They'd be in fifth place. Pretty close to last. Well, uh, everyone's pretty close to last as far as our division goes. <laughs> we have such a... What's our, what's our lead on Iowa now, currently? Uh, 13 points. Ooh, man. So if they went on a six-game losing streak, we'd still have them by a point. Yes. That's pretty good, but I don't think we're going on a six-game six losing streak. Unless the Predators just said, man, our team sucks. Give us all your beef. We're trading away everyone. Yeah, we'll trade everybody and you just fill in the void and blah, blah, blah. Milwaukee, you're just going to tank. Don't uh, tank like we were for a good chunk of the year. And we're not sad. We're not even, well, our, we're beyond halfway, ain't we, as far as the season goes? Yeah, pretty much. So is this was uh, game number what for us? For the players? Yeah. 
39. Yeah, so it's almost at the, at the statistical halfway mark. Yeah, everyone else in the league has played 40 to 41 games. The Predators have played 38. Yeah. Up to today where they played their 39th. And then they're off for a few days, So, and the Wild play the next two. So We'll see how ev- that goes. Everyone's going to be, like, clamoring just to... It's a mess. <coughs> Legitly, it's a mess. Um, I mean, I'm no, I know the same Predator or Admiral news, but the NHL announced that uh, next year's Winter Classic will be played at Target Field in Minneapolis. So the Minnesota Wild will be the home team in that one. Um, we really have nothing else, like, really to talk about. Do you want to talk about uh, the uh, reason the... Uh, the reason the Predators, or not the Predators, but the Stars had so many damn penalty men? Well, you know, elbow to the jaw is something to talk about. All right, so according to the league safety, a elbow to the head is an automatic two-game suspension yeah. as far as what we've seen so far this year. Okay? A boarding hit is an automatic two-game suspension from what we've seen this year. So in that case, Corey Perry and... Tyler Sagan should both be getting one. Um, one to the blindside boarding hit that happened to Austin Watson along the boards. Yeah, that was a pretty bad hit. And then the blind, the elbow that caught Ryan Elk. Yeah, that wasn't so a blindside, that, but you can't go elbowing people. That was a blatant elbow. There's no if I wanted to, about it. here's the thing. Now, if you want to give Fabro a game suspension for playing the corner and his elbow going up like this because he's got his stick like this, go be my guest. But that's probably going to be the best you're going to get out of this game as far as suspending a Predators player, and that's being honest. People all want to see Austin Watson suspended for the Blake Como hit. The Blake Como hit was open ice, which makes them look way worse than they are. Yep. And he hit him, which Austin Watson is known for hitting people. It's just what he does. That's how he plays his game. Yeah, but the elbow to the jaw, I don't know, man. I, I can't let that slide. And that's the part where I was mad as far as the commentary goes. They were protect- defending that. Yeah, they were saying say it was a good want, hit. Dude. They were saying it was a clean hit. Yeah, but I'd say what they want. Ultimately, who cares what the commentators say? It's what the NHL does. That's who you should be worried about. Who cares what NBC says? You're not watching an NBC hockey game. You're watching an NHL hockey game. You don't support an NBC hockey team. You support an NHL team. So who cares what NBC says? So, upcoming for the Admirals, as far as home games, you can still get tickets for the next home game, which is... Uh, a Wednesday, not obviously not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, I believe. Is I could be wrong, but I do believe... Next Wednesday against Grand Rapids. Yeah, I was just about to say. Obviously and that is an Admirals bad. winning Wednesday. If they win, you can trade in your ticket and get a ticket to a future uh, Wednesday Admirals. Yeah, game. I'm going to have to make sure I do that. <laughs> Which will be a week from that day versus Chicago. And then if they win at that one, you have to wait like a month. <laughs> but upcoming... Uh, beyond that, besides the winning Wednesday, uh, f- Friday, January 10th, the Admirals will be wearing a green tribute jersey to the 70s Admirals jersey back in the day. Um, on the, They will also be wearing those on the 11th and also have a winter hat giveaway. The first 4,500 Admirals fans will get one. Um, and as well as you will get to meet Admirals uh, legends or greats. Um, Rick Sorius, Danny LaCour, Phil Whitliff, a uh, member of the U.S. 1980 Olympic team, Buzz Schneider, uh, Schneider, and original Admirals Barney Loomis and Tony Scottface. Yeah, whenever you talk about that, just say the Miracle on Ice team. That way everybody knows who you're talking about. Yep. And if you don't, well, just look it up. Miracle on Ice. Most of you have Disney Plus. Just go watch Miracle. Yeah, pretty much. And then uh, January 15th, the Admirals are giving away, it's their 2020 Vision Night. It is, uh... A little cloth you can wipe off your uh, 
glass. Right. Or for most of us, we all have cell phones. We can wipe our phones Same down. Same principle. Same principle. You can clean up your camera. Because we all know selfie life. Oh, yeah. Um, and then on the 24th, um, something me and him been looking forward to. An ag- uh, uh, they're more known for their Christian metal or rock. And depending I'll on check what. them out just to see what the whole uh, hubbub is about. Yep, so expect on the 24th a late show from us. Then the next night we will be traveling to Gra- to uh, Rockford. I was about to say, when the hell are we going to Grand Rapids and why didn't I know until just now? Yeah, oh, you we're almost gonna... slipped up. Yeah. yeah, we will be going to Rockford the next night. Yeah, because I have a ticket. All I got to do is uh, use my voucher. Remember when I got it at the last game? Yep, um, I think we'll be actually in Rockford, I think, twice next month. So. Yeah, I do believe it. So it'll be nice to get a couple away games in, um, but that's We're going... still tinkering with other projects, but you know how it is. We yeah. have a lot of hockey to do. <laughs> also, don't waste your time, but, well, don't no, waste... please waste your time. Yes, please, w- don't waste time, and by now, okay. the Admirals two-for-one sp- specials on January 7th. Uh, you can get an Admirals ticket and a Brewers <coughs> ticket for about 25 bucks, which is cheaper. Um, hey, what's the name of the Brewers stadium this year? Still no Park. Oh, is this the last one? This is the last, last year. year. Yeah, I couldn't remember if this is the year that they changed the name of that stadium. But I don't care. I'm getting old. It's going to be Miller Park until the day I kick the bucket or the day they tear it down. One of the two. All right, so let's go into this list of alums who played in the game from the Admirals, at least just so that everyone knows. All right, so the alumni for the Admirals, at least this year, there were three from the Admirals that played for us this year. Uh, Jared Tenorti, Yakov Trenant, and Colin Blackwell. Tenorti and Trenant did not play, but Blackwell did. Because yep. remember, Trenant and But they were on the players. roster. Um... And then we have Roman Yossi, Pekka Rene, UC Saros, Phil Forsberg, Victor Arvidsson, Ryan Who the Ellis. Hell is Pekka Rene? Um, Why do you keep talking about him? Who is this guy? Uh, Ryan Ellis, Matthias Ekholm, Dan Hamhuis, Matt Irwin, Rocco Grimaldi, Kelly Yardkart, uh, Colton Sissons is injured, so that did not happen. Who the hell is Rocco Grimaldi? Never heard of him. Um, Craig Smith, Austin Watson, all holding their skills as an admiral. Who's Austin Watson again? Um, for the Dallas Stars, there was one player, and that is He's Ale- the guy that's gonna get me punched if I keep asking him who. Um, Alexander Radulov uh, played for the Admirals in the 2006-2007 season. Wait, what? Yep. Alexander Radulov was an Admiral. Yes. For how many games? Uh, he played for us for a whole season. What season? 2006-2007. Wow, that's pretty cool. Because Radulov actually turned into a decent player. Except for his head was not in the right place at the beginning of his and career. And now it's uh, seeing stars. It's All right. supposed to be a joke. But anyways, yeah, this game was a pretty uh, craptastic performance defensively. But for all of you, just remember, buy, go go visit our friends over there at Hockey Locker. Yeah, don't tw- make you smile. I'm like the Predators. Um, they, you could uh, visit them at uh, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Spend $100 on CCM gear and get two free Admiral tickets. What's the zip code? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, okay. And no, or you can no. visit them at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. The website will have the zip code. Um, or you, you can, know sometimes you gotta punch in the zip code when you're on uh, GPS and stuff. Uh, the zip code is five three two two one. Okay, there you go. Um, and then you could call them at four one four eight zero zero seven five eight five. And just tell them that we sent you and yada yada. Yep, he likes doing business with us, so we will see you.